Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation on fast stencil computations using fast Fourier transforms uh, submitted to SPA 2021. I am Aaron Gregory. I am Zafar Ahmad. And I am Yiming Zhu. This is joint work done with Rizal Chabri, Ratish Dash, and Pramod Ganapathy. In this presentation, we'll talk about theoretical and experimental results from two distinct but related algorithms for stencil computations, which we'll refer to as our periodic and aperiodic variants of our stencil algorithm. First, though, I'll give a brief introduction to just what stencil computations are and why we should care about them. First off, what is a stencil? Well, it turns out that's surprisingly simple to answer. A stencil is a small program that you use to update values in a spatial grid as you're evolving it over time. So here, suppose we have a one-dimensional spatial grid with n cells in it that we want to evolve up through t distinct time steps. In order to update the individual cells in this grid, we'll take the values from nearby cells at a previous time step and feed them into a stencil, which will somehow compute an updated value, which we'll use to update the grid. A stencil computation is the result of applying a stencil across a grid for many steps in time. Since spatial grids can come in multiple dimensions, stencils can too. You can have them one dimensional or two dimensional or arbitrary dimensional. What matters is only the dimension of the problem you're wishing to solve. The only, the only important feature of the stencil is that its size and rule cannot vary over space or time. It has to be uniform. In this presentation, we'll distinguish between two types of spatial grids, those that are periodic, i.e. that wrap around onto themselves, and those that don't, those that are aperiodic. It turns out this periodicity is an extremely useful property of a grid, since it means it effectively doesn't have edges. When we have these edges, however, we can't use the stencil to compute boundary values or values of cells along the boundary. So instead, what we're going to do is apply boundary conditions or assume we are given boundary conditions. These boundary conditions can be completely arbitrary. They can be dependent on any cell values within the grid. They can be dependent on time. We impose no constraints on them whatsoever. Stencils find all sorts of applications in scientific computing or engineering, or even, it turns out, uh, dynamic programming. They are widely applicable. They're most commonly used, however, for physical simulations, such as electromagnetic situations or situations involving fluid dynamics. And so I would recommend when you think of a stencil computation, think of trying to simulate, say, the flow of heat through a physical object over time. The problem our algorithms solve is this. Given some initial data, A null, where the subscript denotes time, so that's data at time zero, how can we evolve this data up to some final data, A sub t, where uh, data evolution is determined by a stencil s? And the only rule we have is this evolution equation. The subsequent or a future time step is computed by applying a stencil to a current time step. Now, before we go into algorithms about this, or before we go into our specific algorithms about this, let's talk about some theory. The simplest stencil computation algorithm is looping-based implementation. A looping algorithm applies the stencil t number of times to compute a sub t from a sub zero. Here, the parallelization is done in space, not over the time, which gives the t log n span, where the log n term comes from the spawning n threads. The work is equal to the serial number, serial runtime, which is theta nt. The existing libraries tries to improve the parallel ru running time by carefully matching the hardware cache parameters using the tight looping algorithm. These implementations has better cache complexity and data locality compared to naive lo looping based implementation, but the work remains the same, which is theta nt. And then we have more advanced version with the same sort of concept of the tight looping algorithm. Trapezoidal algorithm exploits space and time cuts to optimize the data locality and parallelism. Again, it has better parallel running time, but still the work bound remains the same. So here we've collected some complexities from the past few algorithms we've seen and the complexities of the two algorithms that we are going to present today. Notice that the serial complexity or the work of all three algorithms, which are commonly used as the status quo, they're the cutting edge for stencil algorithms, is theta of nt. All of these algorithms take linear work 
in space and time. And this seems like it would be optimal, but we show today that it is not. We present the algorithm, the periodic version of the algorithm, which is our algorithm on periodic grids. And this algorithm achieves a complexity of theta of n log nt. So that's logarithmic in time and only linear rhythmic in space. Also, we provide an aperiodic version, which has a polynomial improvement in complexity based on the dimension of the grid. And in the case where our grid is one dimensional, takes t log t or t log squared t plus n log n complexity, which is still substantially better than theta of nt. So to, to repeat, our periodic algorithm shows an exponential speed up in time complexity, or rather in complexity in this variable t, over all known alternatives. And our aperiodic algorithm provides a polynomial speed up over all known alternatives. These algorithms are applicable to linear stencils for, on any dimensional grids, even if the stencils are implicit and even if they are over vector valued fields. Now let's describe each of these three things here one by one. First off, a linear stencil. That means that the program the stencil is using to compute updated values of cells is a linear function of the inputs. So remember that a stencil is a small program. It uses cell values from a previous time step, and it somehow does something with these cell values to get an updated value. What we require is that it performs, it computes a linear function of these previous cell values. So this may seem like a strong constraint on what our stencil can be. And it is, it is a strong constraint on what our stencil can be, but there are a wide variety of physical simuli, uh, situations that can be described by linear stencils, including electromagnetic situations, including some parts of fluid dynamics, including heat diffusion. For a stencil to be implicit means that it uses values from future time steps to compute current cell values. This is something which is very rarely supported by stencil solvers, and so it's noteworthy that ours allows for it. And vector valued fields means that you have multiple fields interacting at once, and a stencil describes interactions between these fields. This is useful for, say, electromagnetic simulations, where you have electrical fields and then a magnetic field, which is actually a vector. So it has an x and y and z component at every point in space. So you have four different values at every point in your spatial grid describing your field. Now let's look at our periodic algorithm, our algorithm for periodic grids. First off, the input it takes is initial grid data, A null, and a stencil S. And it can be shown that if this stencil is linear, then really the stencil S is equivalent to a matrix. So think of this initial data as a vector and this stencil as a matrix S. What we'll do is we'll push these two objects into a frequency domain instead of a position domain by using Fourier transforms. And this can be very efficiently done. We'll then perform repeated squaring on the stencil in frequency space in order to compute a high power s to the t, where this t is still the number of time steps that's not a transposition. After this, we'll compute a matrix product of the high power of s with the transformed initial data, and we'll get the final data, but still in frequency space. So we then take an inverse FFT to recover our final data. Now, this procedure is so incredibly fast because normally computing a high power of this stencil matrix would be very expensive because normally the stencil matrix S would be dense. However, we can show when the grid is periodic and when the stencil is invariant across space, which is a property of stencils and it's linear, that it becomes diagonalized in the Fourier domain. And this means that matrix products can be extremely efficiently computed. Now let's talk about our algorithm on aperiodic grids. For an aperiodic grid, we cannot describe our stencil so easily as a matrix. However, we can look at subdomains of the grid where it acts like a matrix, where in fact the grid acts as if the grid is periodic. So what we'll do is we'll say if a significant number of cells are dependent on the boundary, on the aperiodic part of the grid, then let's do a time cut. Let's chop the grid in half time-wise so that less cells are dependent on the boundary. 
And if a few enough, if a small enough number of cells are dependent on the boundary, that's great. We'll use our periodic solver. And the periodic solver is going to solve for all of these cells which are not dependent on the boundary. So because they're not dependent on the boundary, the boundary conditions could be anything. We don't care about them. The regions that are dependent on the boundary left over from this will be subproblems. These will form similar subproblems, it turns out, to the original problem we were trying to solve, except they will be smaller. And these subproblems will be solved for recursively. So first off, here's the idea behind applying the periodic solver. We have some initial data here in blue and some final data here in red that we want to compute. The center of this final data, the large block in the middle, can be computed with a periodic solver, since the boundary conditions only extend their influence to these red blocks on the edges. Now, the periodic solver does give us values for these edges, but these are incorrect values, so we need to correct them. And we'll correct them using some sort of recursive divide and conquer strategy on these blocks. So let's look at that strategy. What we'll do is we'll perform a time cut. Instead of trying to step directly from A null to AT, we're going to step to AT over 2 first. So here, when we step to AT over 2, we find there are regions which can be solved for with a periodic solver, and there are regions that need to be corrected for again with an aperiodic solver. But notice the shape of these regions down here is identical to the shape of these regions up here. They're just smaller. It's an identical smaller subproblem, and that means we can solve these recursively. After solving for these regions recursively, we put them together and we find now we have correct values for the blue regions. And once again, we apply a periodic solver to solve for these red regions, and we recursively solve for these red regions. After this, we have solved for the regions we originally sent out to solve. Now let's talk about some experimental results from our two algorithms. We experimented with multiple physically motivated benchmarks, which are widely used in popular stencil computation libraries. We have 1D, 2D, and 3D heat diffusion stencil, Seidel and Jacobi for 2D stencil, and another 19.3D stencil computations as our benchmark programs. Another important feature of our selected benchmark is that their data access pattern and the number of dependent cell for the stencil computation also varies for each of the benchmark. For experimental setup, we used two types of supercomputing nodes on Stampede 2 supercomputer to show how the experimental performances varies for different architectures. We used KNL nodes, which has Intel Knights Lane processor with 68 cores, 32 kilobytes of L1, 1 megabytes of L2, and 16 gigabytes of shared L3 cache. We used SKX nodes, which has Intel Skylake processor with 48 cores in two sockets, 32 kilobytes of L1 cache, and 1 megabyte of L2 and 33 megabytes of L3 cache. For compilation, we used Intel C++ compiler with optimization level three, Xhost and AVX 512 vectorization instruction. For parallelization, we have used OpenMP library. We used OpenMP CPU affinity for thread affinity. For grid sizes, we used 1.6 million for one-dimensional grids, 8K cross 8K for two-dimensional grid, and 800 cross 800 cross 800 for three-dimensional grid. In terms of experiment types, we have two types of boundary conditions. One is periodic and the other is aperiodic. For periodic, we keep the grid size n fixed and varies time, which is key. For aperiodic, we have two different types of experiments. One is we keep the n fixed and t varies, and the other one, we vary both t and n. t is the size of grid in each dimension, which is n to the power of 1 divided by d. For implementation details, we have base case sizes for our FFT implementation to decide where to stop during our recursive computation and switch to looping-based implementation. For 1D, we have 128. For 2D, it is 64 cross 64. And for 3D, it is 16 cross 16 cross 16. We use 128 base case for time dimension. For benchmarking, we use Pluto library. Pluto is a state-of-art tide looping code generator which uses polyhedral optimization to find the best tiling methods for stem cell computations. In Pluto, there are different tiling methods. We use standard and diamond tiling methods. For flex, we use parallel and tire. The tire sizes were selected via an auto-tuning phase. 
exploring sizes from 8, 16, 32 for the outer dimensions and from 64, 128, 512 for the innermost dimension to ensure that enough factorization and multi-headed parallelism were exposed by Pluto while ensuring the higher footprint near the cache size. Here we present periodic stem cell computation performance compiled with Pluto library. The column represents the type of machine architecture. The left column is for KNL and the right column displays SKX machine architecture. For each of the machine architectures, we have plots of the speed up over Pluto and scaling performance. For 1D and 2D periodic stem cell experiments, Diamond ran faster than standard, while in case of 3D, standard outperformed diamonds. Our algorithm significantly outperforms Pluto generated source codes. Drawing time is polynomially better compared to Pluto, and it keeps increasing as we keep increasing the time. The bottom row shows the scalability plot of periodic boundary condition stencil computations. Our implementations are highly parallel and should scale accordingly. However, we use FFT computations that are memory bound. They perform only theta and log n work on an input size of theta n, and thus have very little data reuse. We believe that as a result of this issue, our programs do not scale well beyond 32 threads on KNL and 16 threads on SKX. Indeed, we observe that the FFT and the inverse FFT computations are the scalability bottleneck of our algorithm. For the first experiment type of aperiodic boundary conditions, we fixed grid size n and varied t. Diamond outperformed standard for all stem cells, except for heat 1D on both machines. Our algorithm always ran faster than Pluto generated code, reaching speed up factors of 2.3 on KNL and 1.7 on SKX for 2D stem cells. Our algorithm runs faster than Pluto code for fixed n but does not increase in according to a T. The second type of experiment we ran for a periodic boundary stencil computation is to vary both N and T. Here T is equal to the grid size width of each dimension for multidimensional grid. For this case, diamond tiling also ran faster than standard tiling in Pluto, except for hit 1D and hit 3D. However, our algorithm always outperformed the fastest Pluto optimized source code, reaching speed up factors of 2.5X for 2D and 1.8x for 3D stencils in KNL machine architecture. For SKX machine, it's 2.6x for 2D and 1.4x for 3D stencils. Our theoretical prediction for rough speed up factor also implies that the speed up over Pluto code will increase with the increase of n, which is confirmed by the speed up plots. However, for 2D grids, some performance drops at specific values of n like n equals to 9k cross 9k and 15k cross 15k has been observed. We believe that this happens mainly due to a known phenomenon, which is the drastic performance variations of MKL library for FFT implementations. MKL suffers in terms of performance when the sizes of the special grid dimension changes. The performance drop in our experiment is also partly due to the changes in the basis kernel size of our implementations resulting from the changes in the grid size. Here we show the scalability plots of our algorithms. Our aperiodic algorithms are also highly scalable for both of the machine architectures. One of the main concern while dealing with floating point values in stencil computation is that the numerical accuracy over time. The experimental result shows that our algorithm has no worse floating point accuracy than any of the looping based code. That means we get better runtime, but no loss in the accuracy. To conclude, we have presented FFT-based stencil algorithm that work for general linear, linear stencils on both periodic and aperiodic grids, algorithms that work for explicit and implicit stencils, multidimensional grids, and vector-valued fields, which have polynomially lower computational complexity than state-of-the-art, and easily outperform existing fastest implementation of linear stencil computations on multiple machines. In terms of future research work direction, the next step would be to design efficient algorithms or classes of nonlinear stencils, although we hope that some of the nonlinear stencils may fit our framework. Designing low span algorithms for aperiodic stencil and algorithms to approximate inhomogeneous stencils.
Thanks again, and please feel free to ask any questions.